So this is my uh, my current list. I guess you guys can't really see it on YouTube. Um, my current queue for um, analyses. A wise decision. Thanks for the follow, Ragnarok 240. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do some analysis over Rex's stuff that he sent me today, uh, which I've got a bit of a backlog. Um, Cute actually requested an analysis a long time ago, but I haven't actually seen him on the Discord much. Um, I don't know if he's still around or how active he is, but uh, yeah, I'd like to still do some stuff for him. I don't know if any of you guys have seen him on the, on the, the right Discord. Um, well, here, let's let's switch over to moderate capture so we can actually read this. Uh, there we go. So yeah, the, um, Age of Conflict on Discord, I don't know if you guys have seen him around. But, um, yeah, I think I'm probably going to do Saru versus, this is versus I Studying, um, which I think would be pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of an old match at this point in time, since I've been a little lax on uh, um, getting through my backlog <laughs> of stuff to go through. I'm trying to get a little bit more, uh, better, more, um, steady a schedule, so I might do, like, the quick one today, and then maybe another quick analysis sometime further down in the week. What's up, Lady Cookie? Um, but yeah, and then Jack, Jackpo, and Vilkas all have, uh, the queue them up. Well, they haven't given me actually matches to go through. I might I think I might actually do a team's analysis for Jackpo, since he's really good at teams. Um, I'm going to participate with Izaw in his video. I haven't heard about Izaw's video, so you would have to catch me up to speed. Okay, yeah, so that's my current log, uh, as, as always, if anyone has any stuff that they want me to analyze, feel free to shoot it my way, whether that be on Twitch or Twitter, um, shouldn't be too hard to find. Or on the, the Roy Discord, for anyone who's in the Roy Discord. I'm always down for more matches. Like I said, I'm going to try and amp up the production uh, as far as how many videos I'm doing, so hopefully I'll be able to turn through this backlog really quick and get some more going. But as for today's, you're yeah, going to be going over Rex's games. A um, couple of random games against a couple of players uh, versus a Shulk and versus an Ike. So there is a little bit of um, similar themes between the two characters in that they both have really big swords. Uh, let's look back over to VLC so this is proper. See the chat a little bit better. Might be a little bit small, but um... I was thinking about doing a uh going over Static Manny's set from Shine, but he only ever played Roy in one game in each of them, um, which might still be good to look at, but it changes a lot of, like, the flow of games since he's using it as sort of just, like, a one-off counterpick character rather than a steady character. So his opponents don't have as, as much time to uh, to adapt and figure out what Roy does and, like, figure out what, what it is that Manny is doing, how to get around it. So I don't think it'd be as useful for us, us, like, um, Roy mains, because there'll be stuff that will work for him sometimes, just because he's doing it once. Um, which is fine, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's pretty pretty funny to see a lot of the times, but uh, yeah, it's not terribly useful for us as Roy mains. But for today, going to be going over, like I said, uh, sets with Rex versus Ashul and Ike. I believe these are playing online, one of them is on the ranked Smash ladder. Um, we had Shulk and Ike, and both of them have swords. Both of them are not terribly fast, but they do take up a lot of space in the air, so there's a bit of a, an overlap on how you, uh, how you can deal with some of the things. And with that, I'm going to get right into it. Oh, I guess I can turn this down. <laughs> the dankest Sonic meme lord with the shitty internet has arrived. Excellent, welcome to the, the stream. Just in time for things to get started. Yeah, this, so this is what Shulk is going to be doing a lot of the time. Um, he can play a little bit more grounded since he's got pretty decent run speed um, with some of his different uh, Monado forms, especially whenever he has speed on. As you can see here, he does actually have speed equipped. Um, but yeah, a lot of times he's going to be doing stuff like this, where he's poking with uh, with aerials, whether that be neutral air to like fall down on do like full hop falling in neutral air is one of the big things they like to do. Or this sort of short hop forward, forward air to poke in forward. There's a lot of the things that we have to deal with. Um, against a lot of characters, we could be like nearing preemptively 
to get in on these sort of uh, formations, but it's kind of hard versus Shulk because his range is just so humongous. Um, we are a lot faster than him run speed wise, unless he's got like speed or something else uh, put on. But it's can, it can be difficult sometimes to get in on him trying to do things. So I think a lot of the times we should be trying to play a little evasive around his movement, kind of like a little bit like Marth, where we're not trying to contest his hitboxes and his range, but more so like dancing around and trying to put ourselves in a position where we can attack him from inside of like this, especially this this range, where he's significantly longer, got a long, significantly longer attack radius. Once we get in here, we can start like contesting stuff. Since Shulk's attacks all come out really, really slow, um, that's one of the things that they, they complain about for the character. So once we get in on him, then we can press buttons and just like interrupt all of his stuff and his life is super miserable. But uh, yeah. Side B strings. Yeah, so you can see here, I'm setting up for the, uh, the following neutral air. Big ol' range. So this is a bit of a drop on the combo here. Um, forward air a little bit too high. If you had done a short hop neutral air, or sorry, short hop forward air, or maybe even a short hop neutral air, since neutral air comes out so fast, um, it does hit like the same angle it possibly could have true comboed. Um, although this isn't terrible. I think the um, there's an idea here of letting them intentionally double jump if you don't think you can get the combo, and then just hitting them out of their double jump, which puts characters in really, really, really bad situations. Not so much most other characters as we get put into bad situation whenever we get our double jump eaten, but it's still, um, still can be a pretty fun tactic. That's one of the important things in Smash 4, especially since there aren't a lot of true combos. Baiting out the, uh, the air dodge or the double jump. Or, that is basically the rock, paper, scissors whenever someone's in, in a sort of situation like that, where they get hit and they're in, like, negative frame advantage and the air. They're either going to jump, they're going to air dodge, or they're going to throw out an attack. Assuming that you're close enough to threaten to force them into an action. So being able to bait out different responses and cover as many as possible is really, really important in the long run. I like the neutral air down tilts, good ledge pressure. Yeah, you can see here, the, um, this is sort of what I'm talking about whenever... Normally we'd be able to run in and just kind of throw neutral airs out and cut through people's stuff, but because Shoka has so much range, he can put out hitboxes early. Good air dodge punish. Uh, so this is one thing I could talk about also. Um, I actually am not too big a fan of these style dash dances. Um, like the back, forth, back, forth. Because if you look at it, like if you see, see how much a distance that Roy is moving whenever you do these. He's actually not moving terribly far. Like you start the dash here first, and then you dash forward. And then you dash back, and then you dash back. And this is very, very compact. This is a... Uh, it's easy to mark this little circle down as the spot where you need to attack to be able to hit Roy. Um, because this is where he's going to be spending most of the time in this style of dash dance. And, and um, there's not really too much... There, there's there's some merit in doing it, I think, on occasion to like to faint, to fake people out. But if you're not actively using it as a fake out, then um, I'm not too big a fan of it. Um, there... The way that I normally dash dance, or like do these extended fox trots, is um, right. Yeah, going back and forth in a, a longer extended style, rather like so you can you can dash and then like the the single dash back, like if you dash forward and then fox trot and then run back in, I think is really really good. But um, Roy doesn't have too much movement at like the very start of this dash, especially whenever he's going. Uh... Oh, you can't hear me. Looks like I'm picking up audio fine. Let me know if you guys. Oh, video audio died on me. Cool connection you have that sucks um well you can always go back over the youtube video if that's <laughs> very important for you to hear that specific thing but anyways yeah like this uh this compact dash dancing uh is doesn't serve too huge a use other than like minutely delaying your timing um rather doing longer dash dances or like extended dash dances i mean, i use the term dash dance of course because it's so uh obvious so often on my tongue, that's what I think of, but if you dash, and then dash away, and then hesitate for a little bit, and, like, let Roy go out go out through more of his dash, then you can Foxtrot back again, um, which will get you a much longer dash, which makes it a lot harder for people to put a hitbox that will cover this entire thing. But, yeah, in this situation, it's, uh, it's alright, since... 
well, it's 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 not bad, I guess I can say, but uh, yeah, you um, this is one habit that I'm definitely noticing is that you like to use that to set up for the up smash on the ledge. Uh, good players will punish whiffed up smashes. Not to say that this is necessarily a bad thing to try. Up smash is one of the best ways to cover, uh, or one of the the best punishes for people jumping up from the ledge or like falling down on top of us. But yeah, playing playing against really good people, they would. Assuming the offline, online, you'll probably be able to get away with it since there's latency and reaction time in general is difficult. Um, but good players offline will definitely punish up smashes like these. It just learned a technique was still trying to get used to it. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Like I said, there's there's absolutely no shame in doing things wrong. That's uh, that's why these analysis videos are here, so we can point out the wrong things and make them better. And for anyone else who is learning out how to do the extended dash dances, it's a good example of uh, how you can improve. So yeah, you go you go a little bit um, a little bit trigger happy on the up smashes whenever he's coming up from the ledge, which whenever he's at such a low percent, where uh, where up smash is definitely not going to kill. Uh, I'd recommend. Um, Pulling back on that a little bit. Unless you can get like a guaranteed up smash punish on something, which I'll point out later on at the egg match. Um, it's a pretty risky thing to throw out. Good in air pressure. I imagine this is supposed to be a down tilt, but it still worked out great, so we take those. This is really, really good spacing, actually, for uh, for safely pressuring the ledge. You see, like, that's going to be out range of most get up attacks. If, um, if you did do get up attack here, it would whiff. Whether because I don't actually don't know how long uh, Shulk's get up attack animation is if it's like if it's I guess his sword extends whenever he does it even if so you would have jumped over it which is really good um, you may want to have been just a fraction closer so the nair would actually be threatening with the tip right here I think it's gonna be just out of range but in general if you want to safely press the ledge especially this early on in the game whenever you still want to get a feel for what they like to do at the ledge I like this option um, oh it might have hit if. It's a little bit lower, but, um... So yeah, even being outside of the range of his retaliatory attack, he may have been able to F-tilt, but it's kind of a risky thing to do as, as Shulk. It doesn't have much fast range on the ground. Yeah, so the, um... I think this is an example of when doing the, the little... This is, of course, the, the shorter dash tense that I was talking about. Um... Can watch the stream without it freezing every five seconds. So yeah, I'm hoping... I don't know uh, how how much I need to stream or how, like... I know eventually they do add quality options to the the Twitch stream, which I, of course, don't have yet, because I haven't been streaming too much, honestly. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get that. I know I've heard that's uh, that's one way that people can have that problem resolved, is by turning the quality down. But yeah, the, um, again, decent idea on the up smash. Uh... I guess I can close out this team. This can go away. And and uh, it's a good option to cover this this option. But um, yeah, but good players will just know. Good players will punish you for trying that. Oh, Schultz range. Yes, it's really important for in this matchup in particular to keep in mind what Shulk has as far as uh, his Monado arts are concerned, because normally. This far back, like, we would not have any threat at all of him coming in at us. But because he's got speed on, he moves so fast in the air, and his attack comes out pretty fast. So, like, right here, you wouldn't have been able to react to that, even offline. Um, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't try to attack after the initial will be here. Because you probably could have, like, thrown out a back air, and it would have been a pretty good challenge on whatever he does. Shulk can hit, like, this area pretty well, because he's got neutral air, which comes on down, and forward air, which comes up forward. But his back air is pretty slow, actually. Um, and his down air is basically, like, not really a move. <laughs> we don't really need to worry about that outside for match guarding us. So you probably could have challenged here, and um, especially because his back air is just a straight back hitbox. It might, like, hit below him a little bit, but our back air would cut through before that came out, assuming he didn't start it super early. So uh, Yeah, shield, of course, makes it so... Uh, Shulk is extremely heavy, which means we basically just don't kill him whenever he has shield on. But he is really, really, really slow. Um, and the heaviness can backfire a little bit for him. Because he's heavier, you know, he gets sent a lot less far from all of our attacks, including, like, jab and down throw and such. So, high percents, 
even, we might still be able to get some guaranteed stuff on him, just because he's so absurdly heavy. So, like, doing, like, jab, jab into stuff, or jab into neutral air up at these high percents, where it normally would, like, not even close to work. Um, this is a good up smash. Super good. <laughs> So a pretty, pretty big lead now. Um, I think this could have been forward air. This was like... This is the good neutral air for as far as combos go. Um, not perfect, but really good. The um, perfect neutral air starting for combos, you want to be fast falling like the... Um, you want to have the second hit as low as possible, so that you obviously have as much frame advantage as possible, landing the ground faster, getting to attack faster. Uh, that was kind of a high neutral air, so probably maybe not have been able to get um, forward air off of it. But you could go into like another neutral air just to poke at him. Um, side B, unfortunately, does not, because of Z-axis shenanigans, does not hit high in this game. Um, so you can see here it whiffs. Double Edge Dance in previous versions of Smash is a really good anti-air, because it's got like this huge arc that you see. But in this game, does not actually hit like above Ray's head, so... Especially, well, it can hit some, like, people's bodies. If, if Shulk had been, you know, standing straight up, this double-edged dance probably would have hit because his feet would have been angling down. But because of his, uh, his being hurt animation, it's not going to hit. So they could have gone for, like, an F-tilt here, and it probably would have worked. Um, just does, like, a quick one-two string. Probably difficult to react to online, um, but still something to look out for. Well, we'll see. Would you like to play? Yeah, still got a little bit of damage up, unfortunately. But good spacing on the down tilt. So, uh, one thing to, to point out. Um, Roy's down tilt actually does not have a hitbox on the very tip. He has the X's completely threw you off. Yeah, yeah. So Roy's down tilt actually doesn't have a hitbox on the very tip of the sword. So, like, that, that going forward is not covered by the um, like the hit bubble. So we actually can't really use that tip as a visual notifier of where we need to be placing our down tilt for these sort of edge guards. We need to be a little bit forward, which is possibly one of the reasons why this down tilt doesn't hit here. Yep. Fortunately, Schult gets like almost nothing off of, uh, off of throws. Uh, I don't actually have a song, guys, unfortunately. Minecraft pick. I'm all just playing music off of uh, iTunes in the background. This is one of the big things. If I had to say any one reason why you lost this game, it's because of these double jumps. And at, as we all know, Roy, if he gets out of this double jump, is just is the deadest character that ever dreamed of trying to live. And the, he hits you with another... Um, neutral air in this same sort of situation, where you're getting out of hit stun, like, just around where the ledge is, and rather than... So, well, to, 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 to rewind a little bit, a lot of people, the, the very first gut reaction, of course, is whenever you instantly get out of hit stun is to do something, whether that be air dodge or jump or attack. What's up, Sally? How's it going? So a lot of people in these sort of situations where their opponent, you know, is not actually very close to them, will often just go to jump, because, you know, that's what you do, right? You jump, you gain retro, regain control of your character. But in this situation, that's really, really bad, because as uh, as you can see here, you're going to jump, and there's going to be a long time before you can actually get to the ledge, because the ledge is safety. This is the place where you don't die at. I'm doing pretty good. Um, and so, of course, a lot of people, knowing that the first reaction to, of players whenever they're out of hitstone to jump, is uh, just put hitboxes here. I mean, you did it earlier on, whenever you did like the, the neutral air and then just forward air high because, you know, he's going to jump. Why wouldn't he? Um, yeah, so in this specific situation, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to let yourself fall a little bit further th and then up be directly to the ledge. Okay, yeah, up being without using your double jump is really important. Um, if you have tap jump off, it's a little bit harder. But not, like, strictly 100% necessary because even if you, like, you drop down and you double jump a little bit and then up B and snap to the ledge, you're still getting to the ledge very fast. If you get hit, you die, which sucks. But um, the period of where you'll be vulnerable to like getting hit and dying is extremely small. 
rather than this getting hit where you're going like all the way over here and then you're safe like whenever you're landing on the ledge. So yeah, that's that's like the main reason why you um, you lost this game. You could also just potentially move the ledge. Yeah, like right here, you're, you might be a little bit too far off, and this this particular freeze frame to actually uh, drift to the ledge. If you can just drift to the ledge, that's great. Um, yeah, you you can half tilt the stick to to up B without using your double jump, which is something that I've been working on. Kind of awkward at first, but definitely worth looking into, especially if you're really married to having tap jump on. Um, well, let's let's. Look. See if you could have drifted back to the ledge. Clipped by four neutral air. Um, yeah, you were a little far away here. You might have been able to drift to it, but probably not. Um, if you do really want to double jump in this situation for whatever reason, if it be, well, well, for whatever reason, if you think they're going to be, they're going to be covering like the, the the low up B or whatever, you can also jump and then immediately air dodge. Um, which still is really risky, like, if you get hit by it, you still die. It's still, like, a pretty big window to get yourself killed. But, um, it's safer than just double jumping and doing nothing. And then you could potentially, like, air dodge and then land on the stage or fall and drift to the ledge. Um, not the best thing to do, but there are some situations where it's useful. But yeah, this is something that we will absolutely 100% have to deal with as Roy players. Anyone who's looking to pick up Roy, or anyone who's played Roy a little bit, this is one of Roy's biggest weaknesses. If you hit him even a little bit at the right time, specifically after he's using his double jump, he just doesn't make it back to the ledge. So you can die at super, super early percents if this happens consistently. It's interesting that side B is still pushing too far away. Thanks for the follow. Adam Fist, welcome to the stream. Yeah, again, Shulk throws a garbage, so... Okay, good grab. And the, so this is, I think, one of the, the, um, the pluses for us in this matchup. If Shulk does do an attack and then he whiffs, he's got enough lag that we can zip in afterwards. Yeah, you can remove Smash, Tap Jump, and Smash 4. You can remove it in Project M and Brawl as well. Melee's the only one. Self on pronounced it right. I get that more often than you <laughs> than you might think. Apparently, I've seen a lot of people say, "Like, wow, no one ever pronounces that right." Our community grows. Thanks for the follow, Gabe Guts. But yeah, if we can stay in this position, like just outside of his range, and then like shield if he pushes in, or whiff punish whenever he he does actually whiff something, um, I feel like that makes the matchup really really hard for Shulk because Shulk's not a fast character. He can't really rush us down. So if he can dance around the edge of his spacing like this, and then zip in afterwards, he's going to have a hard time. Again, good neutral airs and down tilts. Smart forward air from a neutral air from him to get you off of him. Again, putting on the shield, so he's going to be super tanky. Um, I... Whenever you're behind someone like this, I actually prefer to go, to, go for jabs myself. Um, one, because it comes out faster than down tilt, and two, since they're not facing you, they can't shield grab you anyways, so you don't need to go for, like, the super high, uh, frame advantage down tilt. Like, if you had jab here, you probably would have clipped him, and then gotten, like, one or two follow-ups since he's in shield mode and super comboable. Um, which I guess is one thing I could say, uh, overall, is your use, your use of down tilt is really good, but I feel like it's almost a little bit of an overuse, not enough jab. Uh, down tilt is for the safe reaction, or the, the safe poke, safe, safe, safe space control, whereas jab is for more anti-air and for better reward. Have you watched Dexter from MDVA? No, I don't think I have, actually. I would be very interested in seeing him. Always love to see more right play. Let me know how the audio levels are. It looks like it's it should be uh, high enough above the music, but this is kind of a quiet song, so some of the other, other noisy ones might... Uh... Oh, yep. I'm sure you, you realize this is not the best OP. Um... Yeah, if you had fallen a little bit farther, of course, uh, snapping onto the ledge would have been good. I'm sure his sets on VG Bootcamp from Sanity or somewhere on YouTube. Audio level is great. Excellent. Good to hear. Um, yeah, if you just... In this situation, um, again, it's better just to drop down and then snap. I'm sure that's what you were attempting to do, but just a little bit of a misinput or mistiming. He probably could have punished much harder than that, but he was in shield mode, so you would have been fine. I like the idea for the counter. Good falling forward air. He probably could have punished there if he had reacted to the large shield, but that's okay. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Better level up on the movement there. Uh, yeah, and the same thing here, where he does that same same strategy where he tries to put a hitbox and cover this area. Um, which was, this situation is a lot scarier, because we are lower, and it is much harder to get around, like, this sort of attack, rather than just hitting us out of a double jump. And, yeah, you can see, he started up the up here, he hit you out of it. If you did have your double jump, you probably would have had a chance to come back. Um, this would be a situation where I would probably double jump an air dodge. When, um, when you can see that they've got enough setup time to get down and, rec and, uh, and cover this area, because... It's pretty difficult to dodge the attack otherwise, and as you can see here, we're, we're not really getting through his, his neutral air. Um, so in this situation, double jumping and air dodging, and then, if possible, either just snapping to the ledge afterwards, or, or if you have to, use your up B, or even just up B on stage. Like, in my opinion, that's it's fine to double jump, air dodge, up B on stage, land, and then get punished by them as they're coming up if you're at this low percent, because if you die here, that really, really sucks. And if you take a hit, like a forward air or neutral air, for up being bad and him recovering and hitting you, then you're still only at like 75, 75%, maybe a little bit higher. And that compared to dying, of course, is perfectly acceptable. Yeah, alternately, if you had done like the uh, the slight tilt on the, um, on the stick to get the, the up B without double jumping, you probably would have survived. Um, uh, one thing you can do, actually, so you can... There are two different ways, really, to use up B without double jumping, assuming you have to have jump on. One is you can, like, partially tilt it and then up B, and you can still get the register of the up B whenever um, you actually... You haven't pressed the stick up high enough to actually register a jump. The other method that I, I usually use is you can move the control stick up... Um, rather than like pressing up to go the up just instantly, slowly moving your, your thumb up to the top of the um, where the control stick registers. So that way, which takes a little bit of time, it takes like a second or two if you're like, if you're doing it slow enough to make sure that it doesn't register as a, a double jump. But yeah, since it, it only registers as a double jump on tap jump if you press up quickly, kind of like smash inputs. So that's another way that you can do it, which personally I like doing. Yeah, so that's that's really only like the major mistakes you made this game. Like you, as I'm sure you saw, and as I'm sure you felt playing, uh, you you had the percent lead the entire game. Um, I, I kind of heartbreaking, honestly, <laughs> that you lost this uh, this game. But uh, that is that's uh, that's one of Ray's big weaknesses. He said he's very very gimpable. So Got to learn ways around it. That wraps up game one. Uh, gonna be doing one more game and then probably call it a night for the stream. But yeah, so this one against Ike. Uh, I feel like I recognize the name San. I don't know if any of you guys know who San is. I feel like I I should know him as far as Ike's go. Gotta love playing on the Fire Emblem stage versus the, the Fire Emblem Ditto. Totally confused at the end. Hmm. After the losing to the, the Shulk. Yeah. Yeah, have you taken notes? Good! Excellent! Yeah, I, I definitely encourage taking notes, especially if there's, like, there are problems that you're working on, or just, like, stuff that you don't quite understand yet. Um, or things that you obviously uh, now can see from me talking, so... Sometimes it's nice to have the reminders, even if you're not necessarily going to be going full to buzz and like taking you know, the laptop with you <laughs> to, to check out before each tournament set. Just having some reminders to, to read about, to remember what it is you're working on and what the solutions are and the problems you've been having. It can be good, and it can be a good way to uh, keep that information in your memory. Um, yes, playing against Santa. I assume this is another online game. Um, Ike, like I said, a little bit similar to Shulk. Uh, moves a little bit slower, hits a little bit harder has just a tiny bit less range, but still more than us. Um, you've never seen this stage in competitive Smash 4 sets? It is the uh, the Omega version of uh, the Fire Emblem stage, so it is kind of a, a gentleman gentlemaning to it sort of thing. But um, yeah, Ike's got a lot of range. Very similar to um, similar to Shulk, he can be doing lots of like full hop dropping aerials. Whether that be with forward air or with uh, with neutral air to cover all the space around and below him, there's neutral air very very similar to Shulk, just a smidge less range, a little bit better combo ability. 
But uh, that's actually... That's what Sam does a lot in this game in particular. Um, so I, I can give some pointers on how, how well we can deal with it. Got good neutral areas, good spacing from Sam. A little bit, yeah, a little bit uh, <laughs> of a heavy trigger pull here on this F smash. I don't know if it was intentionally just trying to do an F or something, but... It's fine if it hits, of course, but... Um, I think this would technically have been punishable, especially because you fire shielded it here. Um, which is one thing that I could really say. One of the best ways to combat this sort of, like, falling with very obvious hitboxes um, method of attack is power shielding it and then doing an attack afterwards. Like, um, F-Tilt might not have reached since he's sliding pretty far away, but you could have power shielded it, power shielded it drop shield, and then, like, side B. Uh, get a little bit of a dash, if necessary, to make sure that you're actually in range. Um, Ike Fair is massively powerful, yes. Ike Fair hurts. Not as much as some of his other stuff, but it is definitely... Uh, his back air hurts more, but forward air will kill you, especially if he hits the stage. But yeah, power shielding it and then responding with various things. Uh, side B is one of the best ones, since, of course, they are going to be on the ground, so they are, you know, um, below Roy, where the range of side B will actually hit, where it won't get boned by the Z-axis. Um, and of course, other stuff you can do, like up smashing out a shield, um, power shielding, and then jabbing is one of the the safest ways to go for power shield punishes, assuming they're landing in front of you, of course, in this situation, not really viable. F-tilts are fine, too. Um, you could also look into doing some of the power shield option selects that I personally like to do, but that requires, more often than not, requires you setting one of the, uh, the face buttons to shield. I use Y. Um, I wrote a big article about that. I wrote an article going over that on the T-Luck website, if you do want to check that out. I won't go into it here, because I could probably do an entire stream on it, but... Uh... Yep, good jabs. Um, this is a good example of why I don't like jab to grab. Uh, because it's pretty not true. Yeah, here you can just jab you out of it. I much prefer, like, jab into another, like, safe poke, whether that be another jab or a down tilt, or, like, a jumping to set up a neutral air. Um, I kind of like the full-up forward air, since he has been jumping around a lot, but a little wild in the execution. And one of the best parts of full-up forward air is the fact that you can do some... Since forward air ends so fast, um, we can actually do full-hop forward air, do like this chop to cover all this space. And then if they didn't do, um, didn't jump, didn't get clocked by our forward air, then we can double jump away, we can double jump instead of like cross up back air. Uh, this is actually one of the really nice ways to set up first hit of neutral air, is by doing rising forward air and then falling and going for first hit in air. It's kind of low percent to go for first hit in air. You might be able to do like first hit in air into Japanese percents, but um, even like uh, falling up air uh, can be can be nice. That's not at all where falling up air would hit, but I think you get the idea. So yeah, the, um, this this uh, method of attack with forward air, where you fall up forward air and then don't do anything afterwards, just land. Um, does make it so you can go into shield afterwards, but I feel like if you want to do this safe variation of full hop forward air, you should just be double jumping away instead, especially against a slow character like like If you had double jumped and forward aired and then double jumped away, he's not going to be able to catch you. Like that, At the very worst, he'd be able to like, attempt to call the landing with dash attack, but that would be super, super risky, and especially the first time that you do full hop forward air, double jump away, he's not going to be expecting it. Unless you're super, super predictable, in which case you should be double jumping and attacking or falling with more attacks, etc., etc. Um, so I, yeah, I feel like this method is a little bit of a half measure as far as uh, being safe after the full-out forward air goes. Good job not air dodging. Would have took a ton of damage if you did. Yeah, similar to the Shulk, it can be pretty difficult to challenge his hitboxes, uh, especially whenever he's doing forward airs and then drifting backwards like this. Um, you can see here... Look at all this, this coverage that he's got. Just the jabs, it's the court air. So he, he, he covers, like, all of this space with his hitboxes, and then drifting backwards afterwards. Like, it's pretty pretty difficult to actually get a hitbox in to hit him. Um, so yeah, he can poke kind of safely with those. There's not too much we can do it other than get in deep, and, like, if we power shield the, the forward air or shield close enough that we can shield grab him, that's one of the good ways to punish. Um, well, I'm surprised you actually can double jump over there. 
Yeah, dodge here. Good, back air, punish the whip grab. Ooh, the range on this fair. Oh, that's not the right button at all. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so as, as you can see, he's got a lot more range on his sword than we do. So he's going to be able to bully us with a little bit. But so, um, similar to Ike, similar to Shulk, we can kind of run circles around him, though. And Ike is honestly even slower. So it's pretty easy to to weave in and out of the areas that he can attack us. The important thing just comes down to not getting killed, because he will kill us real good if he lands one solid hit. Okay, nice up smash. This is one thing that I can do as well, because he can kind of side be around and zip to areas where it's really, really difficult for us to punish. Um, so yeah, we just kind of have to pressure him afterwards rather than going for an actual punish. Very nice double jump here to set up for the safely stick in the air. What she's... Doesn't seem like he's really got a good handle on yet. Um, the attempt here was good. The look I was talking about earlier on power shielding, you could have punished here. His just reaction was just a little bit too late. Uh, which is unfortunate, because then the slightly off timing of your F tilt makes it so he gets power shield. And he was ready to punish, so... Really good power shield up tilt on his part. Nice up smash. So, this is actually... It's worth noting here that you didn't actually punish his aerial coming in at you. So he does neutral air, he lands, and he's actually uh, starting up down tilt, which is a pretty unsafe combination. If he had pushed you too far away to get the um, the up smash hit shield or the shield grab, then it would have been all right. But this is kind of like a kind of a crazy attempt by him, honestly. Um, if you had in this situation, you're doing drop shield. You can see the the the, the drop shield frames there were always throwing his hand out, and then you do up smash. Um, it would have been a little bit faster if you did a jump cancel up smash out of shield instead. So here, you know, rather than releasing shield and then doing up smash, so uh, this is one of the nice things about tap jump is that you can be holding shield and then just press up and a, the A button, and the up will count as tap jump. So where I will start is jump out of shield, and then you can cancel the jump, the the start, jump start frames directly into an up smash. So it's a significantly faster way of punishing. It's one of the the best punishes Roy has out of shield outside of like up B out of shield, but this one's a little bit slower but hits a lot harder. Yeah, the up smash out of shield using the jump cancel method is really, really important. And one of the, the best benefits of using tap jump is that the up smash out of shield is really, really easy. Very nice spacing, actually. Yeah, a little bit of a drift back. This is one of the fun parts of uh, of neutral bleed, since Rice got that bit of a drift, where it, or not the drift, but the, the lean, where he leans back and then brings the sword down. It's nice as sort of like a counter poke against some characters. Yeah, I really like the up smash here. So this is it. I don't know why. This is something I never considered. <laughs> is if, if Ike does a, a high up B to, to just run in and up smash him. Because Roy's arm it, is invulnerable whenever he does up smash. So this is a really good answer. People who are trying to be cheeky. My answer to it was trying to do up, up B and armor through the hits. But that's pretty difficult to time. Whereas this looks pretty easy. Oh, uh, yeah. Going to be pretty good damage here. Uh, looks like he started up with B. Oh, jab. Okay. Uh, you're kind of risky to be, like, throwing attacks at an opponent whenever, uh, whenever you're coming up from the ledge. Mm, nice strings. This is one of the reasons why it's so scary to get hit by neutral air, is because the knight gets a free hit afterwards, and that's, uh, 23 damage. Which is, like, the equivalent of one of our good combo setups. Or, like, better combo setups, anyways. Uh, it's good to note here that, um, yeah, you are playing, go for a little bit more defensive here since, uh, since you do have your back to him, which is a good thing. Um, be, whenever your opponent has, is behind you whenever you're shielding is one of the worst situations to be in. Um, yeah, I like the, uh, the hunt down on the roll with side B, a little bit risky, but... Yeah, so this is a good example of better snapping to the ledge. So you get caught here, and um, 
the forward air isn't totally necessary. Uh, you could have just fallen and then done this, but um, if you know if you have to do something to <laughs> to make yourself feel less antsy, the forward air. Uh, in this situation, at least, it's fine since you're so super far away from your opponent. But if you were like in the situation where the 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 Shulk was trying to set up neutral air to to beat your snap to the ledge, forward air might make things a little bit too slow. Or honestly, even just in the same situation as Shulk, um, where Shulk was attacking you, is to fall down and then wait a little bit and then air dodge, so you can make sure to dodge his attack is also a decent strat. Punish on his part. Still getting a big getting up throw. This is kind of fun that you can use his side beat to just kind of get across the stage <laughs> to set up uh, his his ledge pressure. Okay, yeah, this was actually really good. This is the same sort of situation where I was talking about, where it's, it's people's gut reaction to just double jump as soon as uh, you're out of hit stun, especially in this situation where he would have had to either tech or air dodge into the ground and get punished, or you could do some other tricky stuff. But yeah, it's it's pretty common for people to, to double jump in this situation, so it's good that. Uh, that you were able to pressure him and punish the air dodge afterwards. Hmm. Kind of a silly attempt by him. Probably could have punished with like drop shield up tilt, but again, reaction time. Ooh, that up tilt has a lot of range. I guess he does get a little bit of slide from the shield. And it is hitting your shield. This would have actually whiffed. Um, if your shield wasn't up, the, um, it's an interesting part of, of Smash is that so whenever you have your shield up, your shield is actually bigger than your body hitboxes are. So like for an example here, like this is the blue is where our actual hurtboxes rather. Uh, the blue is where our hurtboxes are as a body, and the red is where the shield hurtboxes are. So there are some times where you can be attacking somebody and it'll hit their shield, but if they hadn't been shielding at all, it'll whiff. Uh, which, this is one of those cases, up tilt. Pretty sure that would not have hit if the shield wasn't up. Not necessarily super relevant in this case, but something to keep in mind. Yeah, he's definitely trying to fish for the kills now, going for up tilt, going for back air, going for F tilt. Nice get up attack to get him off of the loop. Make him respect your ledge. Hmm. Spent a lot of time sitting in shield there, but kind of risky to try and attack. Uh, yeah, this is this is a bad double edge chance, honestly. Um, as soon as the second one whiffed, you should have just um, held back or the held back on the extra swings because the doing the third one here gave him the opportunity to to jump over you and just react and punish for free. Side B is extremely punishable on whiff. Um, yeah, so while while sometimes you want to be just like throwing out the the extra swings just to be like trying to catch them whenever they're coming in to punish you, uh, whenever you're at this high percent, I would definitely recommend just stopping the swing as early as humanly possible and hoping they don't punish. Because here, even if he hadn't down aired, um, he could have back aired you as well, which probably would have killed these percents. It is funny that down air killed, but I mean, our our down air kills people too. Maybe not have killed at this low percent, but. Um, yeah, the, uh, the unsafety of the side B is really what got you in here. The fact that you continued with the combination of it. Um, but yeah, so this this game, there wasn't quite so much of... Uh, so the Shulk games are like, you, you very obviously had like those those very key mistakes that got you killed at low percents. This one overall, um, just lots of, lots of things that he did right, and lots of improvements that you could have made uh, around the board to, to do a little bit better. I have this happen to a lot, actually, whenever I try to set up for short offside bees and I get him going the wrong way. Pretty painful to, uh, to look at. You probably could have challenged the double jump here, um, similar to the other situation where uh, where you had knocked him to the right and then uh, then punished after you did the double, double jump air dodge. After you double jumped, uh, as soon as you see that he starts a double jump, it's actually a pretty long time for most characters for them to actually jump and then come back down. So there's a there's a window while they're going up here where we can dash forward and set up a much better positioning. Um, whether that be to like up air from below or like full hop neutral air or just run up and shield, honestly, because a character like Ike, he's got a lot of range. His attacks are relatively safe, but if we can get inside shield grab range of the attacks, then you know, we can get punishes, we can get, get damage on. Even just putting him on his back foot is really, really good because whenever he's not on his back foot, he can just kill us randomly.
But that's like the... A lot of the main thing is that he, he picked his opportunities really well. He used his attacks really well. And he got away with a lot of full hopping stuff, which like generally will get a, get a get away with a lot of it, but being able to work around it is as good as humanly possible. It's super important. Yeah, so like in this situation he had landed and full hopped in, since he had gotten a feel for the fact that you were shielding whenever he was jumping. Um could set up the safe back here. Yeah, I, I could, I'm not surprised that you'd felt pressure during the match because he's he's doing safe things, uh, like setting up for the the, the safe um, moment, safe attack aerials, safe method of using aerials overall. Um, so yeah, the the it's important whenever you're feeling pressured like that to not like get too antsy and just try to like put hitboxes up because then things happen where like where you side B too many times and he down airs you and you die at 120. Very important to play calculated, or play a... Uh, not necessarily reserved, but not too crazy. And Sans, Sans really good. Like, his, his overall play was really good. His, um, his damage output is good, which I, I guess is one other thing I could touch on too, is that in this game I don't think you got anything more than a one or two hit string. Which is one of Roy's strong suits. If he if Roy lands um, a clean neutral air, he should be getting a lot of damage. And Ike is a pretty big target, so uh, it's, uh, he's a big target and he's slow, which means that you should be able to find opportunities to land those neutral air. What's up, Lay Stronghold? Yeah, he didn't. Well, uh, Sans output wasn't too amazing. Like there is some stuff that I can be doing. He didn't really go for too many grabs. He got like one or two or three. Um, quick throw into forward airs, but um, yeah, you you didn't land any throws yourself either. But that's not too bad of a thing. Excuse me, too bad of a thing in my opinion because Ike has so much range. It can be very scary to get up close and personal with him. Um, but yeah, I think that that about covers it. Most of the things that I could say. Um, lots and lots of small things to work on. Alrighty. I think that'll about wrap up the stream for today. Um, I'll probably do another quick one, uh, look over Saru versus I studying on either Thursday or Friday. But yeah, no problem, Rex. Uh, yeah, if you have if you have uh, more recent games, I give it you know like a couple weeks to try and implement the. Uh, the stuff I talked about, and then we could, I'm definitely be definitely be down for doing a, another analysis of more recent stuff. Since I know this is like a, at least a couple weeks old. Yeah, I think uh, with that though, I'm gonna call it a night.